1985's Brazil depicts, as many films do, a dystopian future. What makes it different is that its future, I think, is far closer to reality than most others. Brazil follows bureaucratic minion Sam Lowry as he resists promotion and becomes, sort of accidentally, embroiled with a resistance group fighting a heavy-handed government. As you might expect from a Terry Gilliam movie, it's often surreal, it often uses slapstick, and it's often quite silly. But, and I think Gilliam often does this very well, it has some suddenly very serious moments. There's the part where Sam visits a woman whose husband was arrested because of a bureaucratic error. I'm too happy to, uh, to leave you in peace. He hadn't done anything. He was good! What have you done with his body? And there's a part where Sam is charged with a litany of crimes whilst being hung up in a sack. Society attempted to conceal a fugitive from justice, passing confidential documents to unauthorized personnel vis IR dossier Gillian Layton, destroying government property vis an indeterminate number of personnel carriers. Now, without trying to be too negative, I think Brazil is not a perfect movie. Often, the story feels underdeveloped. The characters' motivations aren't always very clear. And as I usually say with things, for me at least, it feels just a little bit too long. That's not to say the film isn't enjoyable, it certainly is, but what makes it worth watching is its satire and dystopian setting. If you look at 1984, both the book and the film, they depict a kind of extreme form of communism that has emerged after an atomic war. Dissent is death, the people are oppressed completely, and individualism has been stamped out. In Brazil, which does borrow and reference from 1984, there's no total oppression, there's no thought police. Instead of a big brother figure, endless paperwork and over-regulation is the tyrant. If 1984 is a warning of what the future could be, I think Brazil is more of a parody of what the present is, in a way that makes it more relatable than Orwell's work. The oppression in Brazil is far more insidious. I hereby inform you under powers entrusted to me under section 47, paragraph 7 of Council Order number 438476 that Mr. Buttle, Archibald, residing at 412 North Tower, Shangri-La Towers, has been invited to assist the Ministry of Information with certain inquiries, and that he is liable to certain financial obligations as specified in Council Order RB stroke CZ stroke 907 stroke X. In 1984, people live beneath the boot of the party stamping on a human face forever. In Brazil, it seems there are many people who don't feel oppressed, who are very much aligned to the ruling regime, or who are fairly indifferent to it. Slogans about suspicion and panic are really not that dissimilar to modern-day slogans we might see in airports. Heavy-handed, militarised police snatch people away for enhanced interrogation under anti-terrorism laws. An omniscient industrial-scale surveillance agency monitors normal citizens around the clock, and before Lowry is tortured for information, a guard says this to him. Don't fight it, son. Confess quickly. If you hold out too long, you could jeopardize your credit rating. Of course, I'm not saying that modern society is like this. But I am saying it's more like Brazil than 1984. The idea that you would have to pay for your own arrest and that your available credit dictates what charges you can and can't fight doesn't sound that far off. 
Certainly, mentions of a 13-year bombing campaign and indications that society is gripped by fear, but also in a kind of denial that anything is wrong, the satire of cosmetic surgery, the incessant advertising, it all seems very familiar in a Gilliam sort of way. Gilliam may have been making a comment about the present just as much as he was making a comment about the future, but whilst Brazil is nevertheless over the top and silly, I think it does have a lot of very serious ideas behind it, and I think Gilliam was very seriously saying something. I think it's worth watching for many reasons, but not least because it is so brazenly subversive. Anyway, excuse me, I have to go and finish out my 27B-6 form. See you next time. Good luck, keep your eye on the ball. Got it, girl. Can't keep the orphans waiting. <laughs>